Chris Rock, who apparently is on sort of this new I'm a better man apology tour. Great. Glad you are. But there were a lot of times when he in particular would make midget jokes, horrible, horrible midget jokes. And no one said anything to him about it. Actually, right after I had something come out, right after I left CNN, it was my little kind of like, F you, um, to CNN. And uh, they, uh, I was in the mall where CNN used to be located. And there was a, uh, Chris Walk walked in to the mall, literally just walk right past me. And I, uh, there was a producer from CNN standing next to me and I had mentioned him in this piece I had done. And she was like, I feel like you need to go talk to him. And so I did. <laughs> like I went up to him in the mall and I was like, hey. And in my previous life at CNN, I'd actually worked with his wife on a dock. So I had a little bit of connection with him. And so I just walked up to him and I said, hey, you know, I know your ex, now ex-wife. She, we worked on a dock together at CNN. And I said, you know, and he, I, oh, and he'd actually tweeted out a midget joke that day. Literally that day, he t tweeted out a midget joke. So I was, I was, I, I was all hopped up and I went over to him and I said, I know your wife. And I said, I'm going to talk to you about this. I was like, can you stop doing that? And he goes, what do you, what? And I was like, listen, I was like, you've made, by my count, at least two really horrible midget jokes. And I said, I don't count your midget jokes, but I know of two. One was today, and the other one is on your, I can't remember which special, and I can tell you the joke. The one, the first joke that was really offensive was, and it actually crossed disabilities. It's really amazing that he did this, but he said that, you know, he said, you know, Stevie Wonder is blind. And you know what he deserves at that rich being blind? A pet midget to walk him around. And then I think it was, so that was, so when I confronted him, I think Hillary Clinton had just won the nomination. And he said, well, this is great. This is what he tweeted out. This is great. We have a woman as vice president. Next, we'll have a gay midget being a presidential candidate. Like he's a little obsessed with midgets. Like, and I don't use that word because mm -hmm. it's offensive, but he's obsessed with that word. He's obsessed with us. And of course he would say, no, I'm not. And it's like, well, you keep bringing it up. So clearly you got something, something bothers you about it. So uh, I went up to him and I confronted him. I was like, here's this, here's this. And I said, do you know what this does? When you'd say stuff like that, we are literally the one of, not only we're dis disabled, but we're one of the groups that no one takes serious and we're treated like we're clowns. We're not full people. And when you, a person with a giant platform continues to perpetuate that, that's harmful. And he kind of looked at me and was like, okay, I won't say it again. I won't say it again. I, okay. Like, what do you want from me? I was like, I want you to get it. You're a black man. I want you to get it. Like, and I'm a black woman talking to you. And he, he said he wouldn't say it again. And he, I could tell he just wanted me to leave him alone, but there's, the apology wasn't real and um, it just wasn't because if it was like he sat and listened to me i'll give him that he did sit and listen to me for five to seven minutes i don't really know because i sort of blacked out a little bit but because <laughs> the crowd kind of circled us too like it got real it was weird and you know 
afterwards, my friends were like, why would you do that? <laughs> and I was like, because I had to. Like, I had to take my shot. And to, I don't know if he's, because I stopped watching his comedy a while ago, because I'm not going to watch something where I know I'm going to be insulted and dehumanized at some point. So I don't know if he's kept up with that promise. I hope so. I hope that this apology tour for being a jerk, he means it. I would love for him to. Um, one thing he did say to me, he was like, well, someone's going to have to figure out how to tell jokes about little people. And I want to be like, it's not you. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> it's not you. It's us. Like, you are not in, you don't get to control this narrative. And there's so many of these old comics. And because that's what he kept saying. I'm in my 50s. Like, I'm in my 50s. I'm not going to change. I'm like, dude. I'm almost, at the time, I was almost 40. It's like, I'm almost 40. Like, you're not that much older than me that you can't do a little mind shift. I feel like that's a little ageist to to say, oh, I'm too old to change. I, I know old people that change all the time. They're like, oh, I was wrong about that. Let me stop that. And like, maybe it takes a little bit of time for it to cycle out more than because they've been doing it longer, more than younger people, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. Like that's actually not how the brain works. So you're just covering up for that. And I, you know, people are like, just leave Chris Rock alone. Don't keep saying it. I, no, I won't. I won't. And because people continue to make those jokes because those jokes live. Those jokes are on Netflix.